everybody. Welcome to Check. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another beautiful morning, Check Tuesday at 8 a.m. I know for some of you, this is super early. I get it. And for some of you, man, I'll tell you with the time change, I've been struggling because I've been waking up at three in the morning. I think I've already had my breakfast, lunch, and dinner by noon. Uh, it, it's, it takes a while to get used to, but hey, I'm going to get right to it. I have a special guest with us today. Her name is April Cook. She's a business partner. She's with EXP Realty. She's a broker. She's an EXP certified mentor. She is a member of SAR Professional Standards Committee. Uh, she's also an SAR Regional Meeting Coordinator. She's a CAR Forms Trainer and also part of the CAR Ethics Advocate. My God, did I leave anything else out, April? I, I think that covers it for the professional side. All right. Well, listen, our time is very short here. So I kind of just told you what is going on in lieu of all these lawsuits with NAR next week or next week, last week and the decision that came out. And I'm just going to turn it over to you and let you run. Okay, thank you, Frank, and thank you for that wonderful introduction. I just want to tell everybody right now, I don't represent any group of people. I don't represent CAR, NAR, SAR, or EXP Realty. I'm just here with my humble opinion and to kind of report on what's going on. You're going to see a lot of at local meetings attorneys out there talking about this and the potential impact. So as everybody knows, not er everybody apparently in the real estate community because they're not following this, is that NAR and um, a couple of co-defendants were found liable uh, this last, uh, last week in the Burnett versus NAR trial in which uh, challenged MLS rules and real estate compensation model. The eight-person jury also found liable home services of American Keller Williams. Now, the case is being appealed, but the attorneys immediately filed another lawsuit against NAR and various other companies, including EXP Realty. So this is not going away. There's blood in the water and they're gonna keep pounding away. So so what does this verdict mean right now? Nothing. And not just not just EXP. Right, not, to, not and I'll give you a list because it includes major other companies. Uh, some you may not have heard of because they're back East, but I, I'll go through some of that if I can find it here on my notes. Uh, yeah, it's not gonna end. So this was done in one state, but it was a federal level. It's not guilt or innocence. You're going to see all of these headlines. Uh, NAR is guilty. It's not a criminal trial. It was a civil trial. It was all about money. So the, the verdict doesn't require any rule changes. But the comments and the things that are out there, news media, were being called a cartel strangling the housing market. So... This is something we have to be aware of and we have to start um, changing how we do business. Our state, California, is ahead of the curve on this stuff. So they've already made changes. Why we have uh, transparent commissions being shown out there. And, the, and again, the trial is going to be um, appealed. It's already been appealed. NAR had to put up major money for that. But what's going on with NAR? You had the CEO immediately um, retire. He was supposed to go to the end of the year. He immediately retired. And I think this case has a lot to do with it. So why did we lose? They had better attorneys than us. Our attorneys did not do a good enough job uh, presenting a sympathetic view of real estate agents at all they they weren't they weren't allowed to present certain types of evidence including what the state law is in missouri why that is i don't know could be because it was a federal case 
There's also another angle at this. The Department of Justice had an agreement with NAR a couple of years back on antitrust issues. I don't know the details of that agreement, but NAR has basically pulled, or not NAR, the DOJ has pulled out of it. They're again going to go after um, NAR on antitrust issues. So what, is, what does that mean? They're going after NAR and major companies for setting commission setting prices. Now, we all know we've been pounded in our head. Commissions are negotiable. We don't discuss setting up commissions. We don't have it open discussion with MEX groups. Well, one of the videos, one of the videos that they played at the trial was a Tom Ferry podcast where they were interviewing uh, Alan Dalton of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services that was very damning. And it was simply a story about him overhearing an agent being very aggressive uh, with their with her client and comparing cutting commission to sex work. So it was very damning. And our NAR attorneys did not object before that video was shown. They have they have to share evidence with each other. So they know they knew this was coming up, but it was played for the jury and it was very, very damning. Some of the other evidence that was damning, training classes on listing agreements, showing the commission already being set at 6%, pre-filled, pre-filled. And they continued on and basically showed that there is a conspiracy going on setting commissions. The one thing that we never want to do was shown as evidence of being done by these major companies. The other issue with the, with the antitrust issue is NAR requires you to belong to NAR, local associations, state associations, because they have ownership in all of these MLSs throughout the country. So you can't join the MLS without being part of having NAR membership. Several years ago, many, many years ago, Metrolist was owned by SAR, but they divested ownership. They still own a very small percentage, I think 25% or less, but there's still some ownership there. What the MLS rules are is you can't put a property out there without a cooperation commission. The whole clear policy that NAR has, and we see it in our listing agreements, do you guys follow clear policy in your area, the clear cooperation policy? That in and in of itself is considered a conspiracy to set these commissions. So what can happen, worst case scenario, we can have a future law that basically um, says uh, we're gonna be banned from sharing seller commissions to a buyer agent. So that would be a major, major issue and it will hurt the whole industry. Do you have anybody have any questions so far before I continue on with this? You're okay. doing good, April. Rock and roll. Thank you. <laughs> I feel you said like that we could be. Go ahead. You said that we could be banned. They could. Worst case scenario, you could have laws coming in certain states that will disallow. MLS is to be owned by the associations. You could have laws that come out that say sellers cannot pay a buyer a, a buyer broker commission. You can have all of these. These are worst case scenarios. Right now, none of that exists, but we will be reacting. Associations will be reacting. MLSs will be reacting to this. They're not going to wait until the lawsuit comes to them. Changes are already happening. So don't think nothing is going to change. 
it will be changing and we have to protect ourselves. Our buyer representation agreement has completely changed. And if you haven't seen it lately, uh, you need to take a look at it. CAR is giving a free class on this and I sent the link to Frank and he has it on the winner circle. So you can see it there, it's free, take it. There's gonna be various classes given local. I'm giving a class this upcoming Monday here in Elk Grove on the buyer representation agreement and how it can tie into your purchase agreement. April, have I have people here on this Zoom call that are not in California. So I just wanted you to know. That, and that's fine. So every state has its own contracts. So look at your look at your contracts, look at your forms and see what do you have for a buyer representation agreement? Because that's what we need to do. I tell my mentees, do not ever fill out the commission in the listing agreement before you take it out there to meet them. Don't do it because then you're setting a commission. You're not negotiating. And if we're going to say that commissions are negotiable, they need to be negotiable at every stage and every step of the transaction. And this is the crux of the whole thing is that commissions are overinflated. Sellers are paying too much commission. There's um, forecasts that commissions are gonna drop by 30%. A million agents are gonna leave the industry. Well, we've seen, we've heard these kind of things over the years. I've been doing this 30 years. Frank, you've been doing it long enough too. Every time something comes along, we hear these doomsday, doomsday scenarios. Agents are gonna leave. This is gonna happen, that's gonna happen. What bothers me most about this case is that our NAR attorneys did not do enough to show the importance of having a agent represent the buyer exclusively. Having that agent uh, buyer representation, how important that was. At one time, at least in California, in the 80s and before that, we were all sub-agents to the listing agent. There were no buyer representation at all. And I don't think this attorney ever asked the jury, would you want to be represented on the sale of your house by the same agent representing the buyer? Would you want to go into court and you're being sued? Do you want your attorney to be the same attorney suing you? I don't think enough was brought into this trial so that everyday people could understand it. We already go in with the public not understanding what we do or how we get paid. They don't know, they don't understand. They think we're useless. And somehow these attorneys, well, I think they're just in it for the money at this point. These attorneys think that we are hurting and the media also, we are hurting home sales. Well, without realtors out there doing the work we do, there would be very little transactions going on and a whole lot more lawsuits. How many times have we heard uh, a seller say, oh, I have a friend who wants to buy a house or I have a neighbor who wants to buy a house. I don't want to pay commission. Great. That person never comes along to buy the house because they don't even know how to put together a contract on the house. And that is, is the failure of the public understanding how important it is what we do. All of the disclosures that are required and every state has their own um, disclosures that are required. California is one of the highest ones. When we do our, our contracts, our transactions, I used to say, you know, the file's this thick. Well, we don't do paper anymore, but those files are pretty thick with disclosures that are statutorily required. Sellers don't know that. Buyers don't know that. They don't understand that. We are experts in this field and we need to start presenting ourselves as experts and we need to start talking about the commissions and going over it in detail with sellers, with buyers, how it all works and why we earn what we earn. Don't be afraid to talk about it. 
I've always been, I've never really used on a consistent basis a buyer representation agreement, but I will now. And I will have that discussion. I've been doing this long enough. You know, if they don't want to use me because of that, fine, I'll move on and I'll help somebody else. But don't be afraid to discuss it and be professional about it and be negotiable. Now, April, um, one of the things, and again, we will say that April is merely giving her opinion on the NAR lawsuit. This is by any means, no instructions, what to do. The appeals are going to last a couple of years. But in the meantime, let's say that um, I have a buyer interested in purchasing a property and the MLS says that's a two and a half commission to the buyer's agent, but the um, they're only going to give 2% to the buyer's agent. What would happen in something like that? So explain. So you're. OK, so explain that again, because if you have a co-op of a certain percentage, whatever that percentage is out there in MLS. Are you saying now they're they're not going to pay that or? Well, we know what happens on the 11th hour of Estro and. Things oh. need to close. OK, so they're trying to, as most people know, we do anything we can to close it, but. The commission you're getting paid is not what the MLS says. Okay, so when I train agents, I always say download that MLS printout with the confidential remarks and all of that information because in our area, that information cannot be changed once you submit an offer. They cannot change your compensation. Once you have agreed upon contract, your commissions are protected for all parties listing agent, buyer's agent within the contract. It's irrevocable. A seller can't go in or our buyer's agent or a buyer can't go in and say, we don't want to pay commissions. It's in the contract. Those are the instructions that the title company receives. Other states could be different, but in our state, in California, with the California Purchase Agreement, the commissions are protected and irrevocable. They weren't always that way. Right. So I, I, I think that um, we're very lucky that EXP is really getting a, ahead of all this. There's tons of training this week in the, uh, in the EXP world, but we're going to be hearing stories of, I've noticed some brokers, uh, like I believe that today there's an SAR meeting uh, at nine o'clock that's going to have an attorney come in or whatever that I'm sure this is going on everywhere. And I Absolutely. think the best thing that us on this zoom call can do is just educate ourselves and constantly reinforce. I've never used the buyer broker agreement ever, never used it. Okay. But I'll tell you what, I think I'm going to start. I, I think, think we I'm need to start. Yeah. I absolutely think we need to, we, we need to protect our relationship with our buyers and we need to be perceived, perceived and presented as their advocate. And it's important when you talk to buyers, you use these key words so they understand what you're doing. We like to talk in acronyms. They don't get it. It's like Greek to them. So we need to break it down so they can understand what is going on, what our role is and what we do for them. Very important. At our local meeting here in Elk Grove on December 19th, we're going to have an, an attorney come in and talk about this whole thing because I think enough time will have gone by to where they can give a better analysis of it. So that's going to happen uh, at our last meeting of the year. But take as many classes as you can. Understand it. We get these forms and we use e-sign and all of this stuff and fill in the blanks and nobody is reading the contracts. Nobody's reading it or understanding it on how it works. Please read these contracts, understand how they work, be able to explain it to your clients. You're not going to give a legal opinion. None of us are attorneys here, but you want to give a good analysis of 
what that says and how it impacts them. Understand what they're signing. You understand what they're signing. If you think a certain paragraph is important, have them initial beside that paragraph. I just set that up for someone to do because it was the buyer representation agreement. How many people know how it works? If you're getting paid by the MLS, does your buyer pay you also? Does the MLS pay you also? No, it doesn't work that way. Read it. How it seems work? like the only people that really made out in this lawsuit are the attorneys. Exactly. It was all about money. It, the DOJ thing is going to be <clears throat> a lot more impactful because they're going to demand changes be made. So this is about money. And again, there could be issues. How many companies out there uh, tell the agents, if you don't charge X percentage, we're going to take it out of your side of the commission. A lot of companies do that. Wow. If you don't charge a certain amount, then you're going to drop down in your split to whatever. So I'm not naming names. I'm not saying what those amounts are. I'm just saying that is a standard of practice. And the other thing is stop using the word standard. Don't tell people this is our standard commission. If there is no standard. Everything is negotiable. Don't pre-fill out commission amounts. You can charge whatever you want. And some companies are very open to allowing you to charge whatever you want, EXP being one of them. So whatever you agree to with that seller, that's what you can do. MetroList allows a variety of commission co-ops, but I think there has to be something in there and that's the problem. You can't put zero. You have to put at least a dollar in there. So be yeah. aware of what that co-op is so that you can have an open discussion with your buyer about that property. So it'll be interesting how it comes out. There's a lot of uh, YouTube videos on this, uh, people following it, attorneys following it, media following it, but not a lot of agents are following it. And that's yeah. unfortunate. So April, being that we have other people from other states on here, could you name the other companies that were oh. um, yes. involved let me, let in me. the counter lawsuit? Let me let me see if I can find that. Uh, it just seems like they're going after the big companies with the deep, deep pockets. They they absolutely are. They absolutely are. Let me see. Uh, I had it up here, and they're never so sorry. Let's see. After lose, losing high profile. Okay, let's see if I can get into this one. So it is, I think, we know okay. EXP uh, is one. Uh, Compass, EXP World Holdings, Redfin, Weikert Realtors, United Real Estate, Howard Hanna Real Estate, Douglas Elliman, uh, Ketchman, um, or that, not Ketchman, catch mark that's something else but uh these are the companies compass wow. exp uh redfin weikert united real estate howard hannah and douglas element they're going to go out they're going to go after big pockets and get this even though nar lost the case they're going after nar again and they're going to keep going after it because they are the co-conspirator in this whole scenario how long and do you think NAR, how long do you think NAR can last? Well, it's not, they don't have unending pockets. And I'm not sure if their insurance pays for this or how it's being paid for. I have no idea. But there's going to be a lot of divesting in the future. And I think the DOJ may at some point come out and say, NAR, um, associations, you cannot own MLSs. That's an antitrust issue. It's like when they broke up Ma Bell, they broke it up. You can't own the whole telephone company industry. Wow. Well, I know that, um, oh, gosh, I had something on my tongue and I had a senior moment there. Um, I know that um, a lot of companies 
for example, Remax, I've heard is, you know, are they disassociating themselves with NAR? I, I not Remax, but I think there is a major company out there that's doing that, that's already done it, but they can't do it in mass because every state has their own rules on that. Got it. Okay. Okay. So we just don't know. And we'll we'll find out more. I think we got one minute left. So I want to thank you for having me. And again, I don't represent anybody. I'm not an attorney. I just have my humble opinion. And we all need to be better at what we do and more transparent. April, can you put your phone number in the work chat in case anybody wants to get a hold of you? And... April, thank you so much for your opinion today. This is a very, very big topic that I just don't think a lot of people are paying attention to and they need to. They really, really do. Absolutely. It's going to be major change in the whole industry. Yeah. All right. And if uh, sellers can't pay for that uh, commission at some point, buyers are going to have to pay. They're going to have to figure out a way to do it. Okay. Okay. April, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for joining this morning. Uh, we are going to have Tech Tuesday uh, at 8 o'clock next Tuesday, and we have a very special guest. We have Levi Lassick, who's going to join the call, and he's